I'm on a quest to understand why beer is the most popular beverage on the planet. We've seen how it's made, which holds important clues to beer's timeless mystique, but also its surprising influence. Beer changed history. Because as grains ferment, the levels of B vitamins and amino acids increase. Together with ingredients like barley, hops, yeast, chocolate, and even coconut. These ingredients and grains combine to make beer more than a beverage. It's a meal. Some historians think beer's versatility as a meal compelled the first brewers, the Sumerians, to give up their nomadic hunting and gathering, to become the world's first agricultural society. And remember how the pilgrims went AWOL when they ran out of beer? They weren't just missing their favorite ale. Vitamin-rich beer was like food on long voyages. So when the beer ran out, they were starving. Today, some chefs are cooking up a full diet of beer. Beer infuses 90% of the dishes at the public house pub. You can feel the heat coming off of this thing. I have a special on the menu, so a roasted elk chop. Uh, roasted elk chop? Roasted elk, that's right. Okay. We're going to take some cherries right into the pan. And the beer. And the beer. A lot of cups worth, so that's perfect. Those are just going to soak in the beer a little bit and yep, absorb so some of the flavor? Absorb some of the flavor. It also helps cook off some of the alcohol. So why do you choose certain beers for different dishes? You know, basically what I do is we get to taste all the beers when they come in, sure. which is uh, part of my favorite part of the job. I get to use the flavors with what I think it's going to go best with. Cooking with beer may seem odd now, but the fact that it could carry so many different ingredients and tastes made it indispensable. Perfect. Scientists have isolated a thousand identifiable flavors in beer, more than even wine. Let's put those flavors to the test on a beer tasting obstacle course. Dark Belgian. It's a little sweet, made with Belgian candy sugar. Yeah, I can taste that. It tastes like candy. Sour brown with cherries. Mmm. Gets the glands going. <laughs> and this one is one of my favorites. It's an Imperial Stout or an American Double Stout that's brewed with coffee. Wow, that is bitter and dark. This is a real tough guy beer, huh? Just the type of beer I like. But since we're taste testing, shouldn't I be spitting out this beer like a wine? Well, there are a few schools of thought. One common theory centers on the taste regions of the tongue. You can spit out wine because it only affects the sweet and sour portions of the tongue. But with beer, swallowing allows you to fully taste the flavors and aromas because the hops excite the bitter region which extends down your throat. However, scientists now believe each of the 10,000 taste buds in your mouth has the ability to detect all the basic tastes, including bitter. So there's one more reason for swallowing beer. We don't spit when we drink no, beer. Never spit. No. Never spit. No. no. Now, ex can you tell me why? Because uh, we like the beer. We respect the beer enough not to spit it out into a bucket. Trying to make sense of beer's countless flavors, drink after drink, it's enough to get me, well, a little buzzed. I'll admit it, I'm totally confused. How many styles of beer are there out there? I mean, there are literally hundreds of different styles from all over the world. Um, but basically, you could break beer down into two categories to start with, uh, a lager and an ale. So the entire beer universe can be whittled to just two categories, ales and lagers. The only difference, a microorganism. Ales are brewed with a top fermenting yeast strain at warmer temperatures, while lagers are brewed with a bottom fermenting yeast at colder temperatures. So basically, brewing an ale or lager comes down to different kinds of yeast. But which wins the popularity contest? Beer buyers have spoken. Craft brewers and foreign importers brew up most of the ales for a smaller but dedicated following. But lagers dominate. About 90% of America's beer drinkers buy lagers like Coors, Miller, and Bud. To meet that demand, you have to brew big. Real big. 
and they do it in facilities like this. This is one of 27 Anheuser-Busch breweries. It churns out over 3 million barrels of beer every year. How much? 175 times more beer than the craft brewers at Smutty Nose. Is this where the Clydesdales are at? No. <laughs> Look at these huge containers. This is a lot of beer. <laughs> this is our lager cellars. About how many pints of beer do you think could fit in one of these? Each tank can hold 1,200 barrels of beer. 1,200 barrels. Yeah, and if you consider there's 31 gallons in a barrel, you can kind of do the a math lot. there. <laughs> this is how you should drink beer, right here. <laughs> If 9 out of 10 beer-drinking Americans prefer lagers like Bud and Bud Light, what makes them taste different than ales like at Smutty Nose? On the outside of every bottle of Bud, it says Beechwood Aging Process. The Beechwood is a clue. I'm like a beer astronaut. This is one small step for man, one giant leap for beer kind. It's called the bazooka. Its mission, firing the beech wood into the tanks. And it's our job to spread it around. Remember, yeast sinks in lagers. In this case, right onto the beech wood. Does the beech wood affect the taste of the beer at all? No, not directly, but it has a huge impact on the maturation of the beer. I have journeyed into the belly of the silver whale and seen what mysteries lie inside. The beech wood is only there so that the yeast can grow on it. And instead of adding any flavor, it allows the yeast to not absorb any flavor at all. But this chilly cellar may still unlock the secret to lagers taste dominance. Because lagers like Bud are cold fermented, which brews up a smoother, milder beer than ales which may explain why lagers dominate and why Bud supplies half of the 200 million barrels of beer Americans drink. But it brings up another big mystery. We focus on taste, we focus on the consistency of the beer. So it's got to taste good, it's got to taste the same no matter where you go. That's right. This one Anheuser-Busch plant in New Hampshire pops out nearly 60,000 cases of bottles a day. filling 12,000 bottles a minute. And that's not including the daily output of 100,000 cases of cans. And this is just for New England. There's 11 more bush plants like this in the US, one in the UK, and 14 in China. With that much beer being produced, how do they make sure every beer tastes exactly the same? Whoa. Is this where you control all the beer robots from? <laughs> this is where the brewers can keep an eye on the process from start to finish. So this is the brains of the whole operation. You got it. What if someone sneaks in here and they download all this information? Are they going to be able to brew their own? Brew Budweiser? Yeah. No, not at all. Having a control system like this helps us focus on consistency. From right here, with computer precision, you're able to make sure that everything happens the same every single time. That's so right. That you get the same beer at the end of the process. That's right. Our recipes are hard-coded into the process, and we don't tinker with those. What's your favorite beer? Oh, Budweiser is my favorite beer. <laughs> you didn't without even question. Pause before you said with, that. Without question. Hey, guess what my favorite TV show is? What's that? <laughs> the word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the computers don't have the final word. So this is the final, final step. No this more is. machines, no That's more right. computers, just the beer and people. That's right. Now this is sensory analysis. Everything that can possibly come in contact with the process is tasted first. Even the waters, all the way through. You want to see if I've got any taste? Yeah, why don't we uh, start with the waters? Cool. 